So what if I told you that we've been working on another cryptocurrency? And what if I told you you already have it? Well, are you going to get it? Oh, okay, you're interested. We have this thing called Midnight. Now, I was in Malta. I'll never forget it. We were in Malta, and uh, you know, I was eating at this lovely Sicilian restaurant, and we were talking about the need for privacy. And we looked at Monero and Zcash and all these other things, and we we're like, we could do so much better. And we're like, yeah. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if... You know, we, we started working on this, and we said, yeah, okay. So later on, I went to Israel for EuroCrypt, and we said, we need to have a privacy coin. We need to have something that has privacy built at the core. But we had no idea what the hell that meant. So I said, okay, let's just hire a lot of really brilliant people. So we got a zero-knowledge expert, Markov, and all these other people, and we just started writing papers. We wrote Sonics and Kachina and all this other stuff. And we talked a lot about what would be required to do have three properties, things that we think are human rights, which the blockchain space is not covering right now, and they're collectively called ACE. Freedom of association, freedom of commerce, and freedom of expression. Okay, so we said, okay, how do we achieve a system that gives us confidentiality, has privacy built right in its guts, right in its core, and gives us the ability to associate with the people we want to, to engage in commercial transactions that we think are legitimate, lawful, and to express ourselves. Why? Because our company operates in more than 60 countries. There's over 152 countries represented with Catalyst alone. Not every one of those countries, believe it or not, it's a surprise to me, has rule of law. Not every one of those countries protects its minorities. And it's very important that we have tools that enable us to protect those people, to fight back against these types of things. And it's also very important that we understand that as cryptocurrencies become more nuanced by law and by necessity, it's very important that we keep the things that we do on them confidential to the general public. And if you disagree with that, how many people here are fully comfortable with their entire Amazon shopping history being public to everyone? Show of hands. No, don't even try. <laughs> or all of your Google web searches being fully public to everybody. Everything you've ever bought being fully. No, of course not. Why? Because they, you have an expectation, even though you trust maybe Google or don't trust, at least you trust their behavior that they're, if you get in a debate with them and say, God, for a guy that Googles dogs so much, you really, uh, you really ought to keep it down. You know, you know they're not going to use these types of things, or at least you'd hope so. The problem is that those institutions, the trust we have in them is being violated on a daily basis. The issue is that those institutions are as corroded as the rest. Surveillance capitalism is a thing. There's great books about it. There's so many people who feel that they need to get some of their identity back, some of their power back. And one of the reasons why a lot of people sign up for cryptocurrencies is they mistakenly believe that cryptocurrencies have this capability. They mistakenly believe that cryptocurrencies will give them privacy and freedom of expression, and association, and commerce. I did an interview this morning with a news agency, and we showed off Symphony of Blockchain. One of the th magical things about that experience is we were able to start from January 3rd, 2009, and visually walk through every transaction that ever happened in Bitcoin's history. That doesn't really sound like you have a lot of transactional privacy there, right? If I can build a VR experience to do that, anyone else can. So we constructed Midnight to basically bring this back, but we wanted to go above and beyond just privacy. We wanted to explore new boundaries and concepts, confidentiality. So this idea that it's private to the public, but you can do voluntary or involuntary disclosures depending upon the business domain. So regulated activities are great examples of that. The Bank Secrecy Act, your bank can't go and tell your neighbor, well, this is how much money Jer has, and this is what he spends his money on. That would be a crime in almost every regulated jurisdiction. Okay, so he enjoys confidentiality. But if he gets subpoenaed, the bank can reveal certain information. So what's cool about the concept is it's really interesting to talk on a protocol level, a cryptocurrency level. How do you do that? 
How do you link identity and privacy in the right way where you can ensure and preserve the rights of the minorities, of individuals, but at the same time be able to not deal with the dark sides of privacy? And this is what we've been working on and thinking about for so long with Midnight. Another thing is all privacy coins right now, all they really do is they keep the transaction private, the token private, the coin private. It's useful, which means you have to have smart contracts. You have to have programmability. So how do you have a private smart contract? It's a very interesting question. And actually, there's people in this room who wrote a beautiful paper called Kachina that tries to answer that question. And there's people in this room who took some time to actually implement that paper and created their own virtual machine. And they used TypeScript as the programming language. Go figure. You can compile it and run it. Wow. So that's what we've been working on. And it's been a hell of a long road, four long years of deep R&D, lots of team members, tons of papers. We published all of them. So this is a new blockchain. What does it need? It needs decentralization. It needs security. It needs infrastructure. It needs liquidity. It needs an ecosystem. Every new blockchain needs that. Cardano actually has it. It's on 200 exchanges. There's over 20 wallets that support Cardano. We have millions of people floating around doing interesting things. We have an incredible ecosystem filled with all these great developers and academics and wonderful people. So it'd be real cool if Cardano could give that to Midnight. What's Midnight going to give back to Cardano? For, because partnerships are partnerships. Well, if Midnight's got a token, in this case we call it Dust, then what happens is as the stake pool operators maintain the midnight ledger with those high performance, high throughput protocols, what they're going to do is they pay rewards back to the stake pool operators and the ADA holders. So at some point when midnight launches, you get dust and ADA instead of just ADA. See? So everybody in Cardano land benefits from that partnership. Suddenly, we're not as adversarial as we used to be, right? That's how we should be thinking when we think about cooperation and interoperability. And this is the dream of four years of hard work. And there are going to be some great presentations tomorrow about ACE. And we're going to, we have a lot of cool stuff. I think there might even be a website at some point up, if not today, then soon. And there's all kinds of great stuff that's floating out here, and you guys are just going to be blown away by the amount of progress that we've been able to do.